Do you have any fear? What is your fear? Have or had you overcome your fear? In my country, Taiwan, all high school students have to take the same national exam called University Entrance Exam in order to determine which college, university, and major that you will study in. This exam is critical because once you fail, you have to wait for next year. During the second year of my high school, I decided to major in art. That's why I spent each Sunday doing art, including watercolor, sketch, Chinese painting, and Chinese calligraphy, instead of study. I woke up super early to take over two and a half hours bus to get to the art studio in Taipei. I stayed in there from 9 a.m. until 5 p.m. and then took another two and a half hours bus back home. My academic grades had gone down and was tired on Mondays. So my teachers had tried to change my mind about majoring in art. I was stubborn at a late age and worked even harder to show them that I could do it. After one and a half years of struggling in keeping the balance between my academic and art learning, I passed the exam and got a chance to choose which art college I wanted to register in. My dad was a teacher the same as my oldest sister. So he wanted me to register for one of the teacher preparation colleges where it is guaranteed that I would be assigned to a teacher position right after graduation. Did I listen to my dad? No. I told my dad that I wanted to be an artist no matter how hard it would be. That's why I choose the top one art institute in Taiwan, National Institute of the Arts, that has only four majors, including School of Fine Arts, Music, Dance, and Theater Arts. It's a five-year university that is one year longer than normal universities in Taiwan. Now, my university has changed its name to Taipei National University of the Arts and expanded the majors from 4 to 7. We finished all classes during the first four years and focused on our graduation show in the last year. The process of getting my graduation exhibition done was not easy. I did encounter some art blocks and doubted myself if I made uh, the right choice. However, with some amazing professors and the classmates' support, I made it. Did I become an artist after college? No, I work as a design assistant in a company where the owner was very nice to train me how to use the basic design programs such as Adobe Photoshop and Illustrator. He promoted me as a designer one year later. From there, I have worked as from an interior designer, a graphic designer, to a textile designer. Did I ever try to be an artist? Nope. I did not even presume it 
because of the assumptions and my fear. I went to Kamano Island Art Studio tour last week. The Kamano Arts Association celebrates its 24th annual art studio tour. This event started 24 years ago and only takes place twice per year. The first time is on Mother's Day weekend for three days and the second one is during in-core weekend from May 20 to 21st for only two days. I'm so grateful that I made it this year. Kamano Island is the only island that people can drive over without taking a ferry in Washington State. When I draw over the bridge, I was confused. Why? There is no river or water under the bridge. It looked like a wetland with a few water puddles. There are more than 25 artists in this event and their studios are spread all over the whole island, including painting, drawing, sculptures, textiles, ceramics, jewelry, leather, and woodworking as well as a hand blow and fused glass. I felt like a little kid to do treasure hunt based on the map to find the artist that I wanted to visit. The Kamano Art Association organized this event well by showing direct and clear signs along the road so people could find their favorite artist easy. It's different from the art walk in Los Angeles, where all artists stay in the same area, where you can just walk around studios by studios. I did not visit all artists due to my limited time and interest. I mainly visited watercolor and oil painting artists. Some artists allowed me to film their studios and artwork, but some didn't. It's always polite and respectful to ask the artist first before taking your camera out. I also got fortunate to speak with some artists about their inspiration, experience, and how they started being a full-time artist. One of my favorite artists, Nikki White, told me that she used to be a graphic designer and illustrator. She started being a full-time artist after she retired. She even told me that she did not paint every day because she wants to enjoy her life as well. Her vibe is so calm, happy, positive, and content with where she is now. That has a show in her paintings. I really enjoy our talk, visiting her studio, and how welcome she made me feel. That's why I spent the longest time with Nikki in this trip. By the way, during the editing of this video, I got a call from Nikki. She told me that I was the winner of receiving her original painting. I was so excited. However, I'm going to pick it up next week. That's why I did not include it in this video. The second artist that I would like to mention here is John Regan. His watercolor style is so poetic that has a free spirit with his life stories showing in each painting. Listening to his experience and stories, I totally lost the time and forgot where I was. The best part that I enjoyed with John was that he opened his working space for us to visit 
So I got to see where he paints, how he set up his working station, and some paintings are in progress. The last artist I would like to share with you is Melissa Gender. Although photography is not allowed in her studio, she created a mural outside of her studio for people to take a selfie. When I asked Melissa how long she has been a full-time artist and how she started, her answers gave me a chill and some tears came to my eyes. She told me that she has been painting for 22 years and decided to be a full-time artist around 10 years ago. She shared with me that she had no fear when she decided to go for her long-time dream. She reminded herself that she could always find a job if it did not work out. She never looked back and just kept going. That's why she is here now. These words seem familiar, but for me, especially at this moment of my life, I feel the vibration when those words went into my ear and heart. After leaving her studio, my heart pumped faster and my mind was refreshed. I always admire artists who take a leap and achieve their dream. Then I ask myself, why do I fear for? Before adopting my cat Boba, I was afraid of cats actually. Why? I got scared by my friend's cat who tried to attack me when I just walked by the sofa. Also, some miseries of cats that I heard. However, after meeting my nephew's cats, who are so sweet, shy, affectionate, and adorable, I adjusted my impression of cats. It didn't mean that I had no fear of cats at that time. I was still very careful and cautious around them. When I adopted Boba, my fear of cats was gone. Boba came straight to me when I met her in the shelter. She meowed at me and leaned on me right after I put my hand near the window of her cage. Although her right eyeball was removed due to infection, she was so sweet and wanted me to pet her so much. After talking to the staff of the shelter, they felt that Boba and I were the perfect match. Honestly, they are so right. Boba is such a sweetheart who is funny, playful, smart, and just adorable. Boba is not only the new addition to my family, but also an inspiration that has helped me overcome my fear. Sometimes our fear has stopped us from pursuing our dream. I don't say that you should not be more mindful about when and how to make your dream come true. What I'm trying to say here is that we should not be scared by our fear and stay in our comfort zone. Most of the time, we are scared by our assumptions and the loads unknown. Although it did not work out this time, you could always find another way or another time to make your dream come true, just like a dandelion that come back each year and bloom in both spring and fall. For me, I can feel that the moment of being a full-time artist is approaching. I just need to be patient and believe that when the timing is right, I will take a leap for sure. 
at the last moment, my fear will be transformed to be my happy place. I hope that we can all overcome our fear and find our happy place. If you have overcome your fear and are in the best place of your life, please share with us how you did it. I would like to learn from you all. Thank you so much for being here today. If you like today's video, please drop me a like, click subscribe, and turn on notification bell. I will see you all next time. Happy painting!